Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today I'm here with Klaus Romberg from Danish Footy and he's going to give us our opinion on the first leg and the second leg coming up between Ireland and Denmark. First of all, Klaus, thanks very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. All the way in Copenhagen. Thanks very much. Um, so, you were at the game there the other night. How did you think it went? Well, if I have to say, be completely honest, uh, I would say that uh, for the neutrals, this wasn't a match I would think it would be. I think it was very tedious, um, to say the least. Uh, not many clear chances. We had two, I believe, and uh, that was pretty much it, wasn't it? I mean, the second half is nothing to write home about, so... A tedious, but also a nervous first leg, I would, I would say, and perhaps a normal first leg, uh, considering that this kind of affair is is uh, over two legs. So I would say, I think it was quite normal uh, for this kind of football to be played in the first leg, and uh, I think, I hope that we'll see something different tomorrow, but let's see what happens. Yeah, now... When you when you obviously seen the Irish like lineup, did you did you did you fear anybody in the team or anything, or were you quietly co uh, confident? Because I heard there was a lot of Danish people who were quite confident of getting a result uh, at home. I think it's twofold. That's the question because if you look at the uh, the Ireland uh, lineup, uh, I, I would say that we see a lot of Premier League football over here. Uh, so the players I mentioned on the starting lineup aren't unknowns to to us. Uh, it is perhaps the thing with, with Irish football is that there's no really clear star. Uh, I would say that you have uh, some players we, who we know about, like Jake McLean, uh, uh, Sierra Clark, uh, and of course uh, I'm saying that uh, Shane Duffy also played well, but there's no real star, star player uh, on, on your side. It's yeah. more like a team effort. Uh, with, yeah, we're, we're, very, we're a very good team unit, yeah. I know what you mean, yeah. And yeah, where, whereas you look at you guys, and obviously you've got the likes of Ericsson and Sisto, Christensen, I know he didn't play. Um, and then you've got Poulsen as well, who's, who's playing quite well for uh, Leipzig and did very well when he came on. But uh, how can you see why they started with uh, Cornelius and not Poulsen? Well, uh, I think that uh, Harreid, the national coach of Denmark, tried to uh, play with two big set of forwards. Uh, they had Jorgensen and Cornelius. Uh, also to say that those two actually played together at Copenhagen uh, prior to last season. They played together like uh, three or four seasons uh, altogether. So they know each other uh, by that one. And now they both play in other clubs, uh, Atalanta for Cornelius and uh, Jorgensen plays in Feyenoord in, uh, in Dutch football. So I think he took that into consideration as well. Um, but it kind of blew up on our faces because it didn't work out. Uh, you guys, your defensive lineup was impeccable. Uh, I have to say that. Uh, especially Shane Duffy played magnificently. Um, your best player by far in my in my book. Dan Randolph a close second pass, but uh, Shane Duffy were everywhere and he closed everyone down. So great player. Yeah, he's been like that since since uh, pretty much the Wales game uh, when McLean scored uh, over there in uh, Cardiff. But he's been he's been brilliant since then. He's really taken his game up a level, and you know, he, most definitely, we've reaped the uh, rewards from it. Yeah, and also I'd like to say I also mentioned that when you look when you're at a game, especially uh, high up, and watch the the game uh, turns out to be his positioning is unreal. Who? Uh, it, it, uh, Shane Davies' positioning is unreal uh, when when you look at it and. I don't know if if he always played like that, but when I looked at that, he looked like a player who's played. I don't know, a hundred international caps, had a hundred international caps to his name. Magnificent. So, real good defender, great in the air. Um, yeah, nobody so gets near great. him in the air. No, no way. So it was amazing because Cornelius and Jorgensen aren't small players; they're big tank forwards. And we also uh, got in uh, Nicholas Bentner, who's also good in the air, but yeah. Shane Duffy cleared everything. So magnificent. Yeah, and overall, would you say it was a fair result, or do you think you should have maybe won? Well, we, we had two clear cut chances, I would say. Uh, Sisto had one after the um, after Randolph cleared Ericsson's uh, attempt, which he should have scored on, of course. And uh, Cornelius also had one. So you can say that in a kind of game like this one, you have to make sure that 
just go on those chances we got. You only get one or two chances. We got only one or two chances. We didn't score. So, all in all, I'd say it was a fair result. Um, yeah, we obviously we got, had one one clear cut chance that was Cyrus. Yes, well, we exactly where Michael made to say. So I would say, I think it's even. And as I said before, before we went live here, I say that it's fifty fifty, and it still is. And it's just to to show how good these two teams play against each other. So I'll say it's a fair. It was a fair result. Uh, we didn't play well. We played with the long balls hopping up to our forwards who, who didn't get a chance of getting down. So yeah, same it. same with us. So it pretty much it was a game of long balls. I think more so. Now coming coming into the second leg, obviously in, in Dublin, how do, how do you see that playing out from from your from your guys' perspective? Like, will you be coming there looking to attack from the off, or would, do you think it'd be conservative to try and not concede, or what way do you see it panning out? Uh, I would like to say that I think we will play the same way as we did at home, but I don't hope we don't, because um, I would saying that uh, I, would th- I would think that we try to play a bit more conservative, uh, a bit more with the break. Uh, I would say because if we score one goal, then you have to score two. The away goal rule. So in that kind of, if you take that into consideration, I would say that the odds are in our favour. Well, looking at that, but your defensive lineup was amazing. So, who knows? You might not get a chance of there. So, I, I would think how I will try to control the tempo, control the game if we can. But we also know that this is a whole new kind of game now, and um, we have to be ready, be on our toes. Yeah, well, I'd say a lot. Like I know a lot of our fans are disappointed that we couldn't get an away goal because there's obviously the fear is no matter if we score one. If you score one goal uh, against us, it's essentially two. So we need, exactly. we basically need to score two because I can, I um, I could definitely see you guys scoring, and I think it would take a lot of like uh, look like the other night for you not to score again. Uh, in two games for you not to score, I think it would be a big deal, especially because he's put like four past Poland in qualifying. Like. Yeah. Well, the Poland game was one off, I would say, because the Poland everything clicked. I mean, if you look at these stats for that game, we had like five shots on goal and we scored four of them. So you can, you if you look at that, it was a blowout in that kind of way because we won four nil. But the stats won with us. Uh, we played a good game, uh, no denying it. Uh, but this is something else because we aren't forced to go for it as we did versus Poland. We needed the points versus Poland. If we were to get this second place and second spot to get, to reach the qualifications round here. So it's a whole other game. Um, also considering that I think that I don't think that you will make another, I don't think you will play differently. Uh, I hope you can elaborate on that. But I think that the way you played, I think it's a very uh, controlled, uh, I would not say defensive, but very controlled uh, lineup you will play, I think. Us? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think. And I was saying with the guys, which we just did a show there, um, we were saying that if you think about it, like um, when Ireland, Ireland are at their best, when like they have to play for to, to get the win. If like you look against Wales, um, we were defensively solid, and then we got our goal when we needed to get our goal. And we have been doing that a lot recently, especially under Martin O'Neill. He seems to get the players up a lot for the big game or for the bigger games. Um, you look at some of the from some of the bigger games that we've won that a lot of people wrote us off. Like we beat Germany one 0 Shane Long scored, and that was when we were pretty much wrote off not to not to even qualify for the Euros. Then you look at the Bosnia the the, the qualifier, and we got our we actually got our way goal out there, Robbie Brady, and then we we took it to Dublin, and uh, Johnny Johnny Walters then uh, stepped up and we beat them, and you know they had ag- arguably. I'd say better players than you guys individually, star players like uh, Dzeko and um, Pjanic and then their keeper Begovic and stuff like that. So <clears throat> at the same time, you guys obviously have your Kasper Schmeichels and Christiansen's, uh, Kiara and Eriksson and the likes. But um, the only player that I can see us really fearing is Eriksson because he's one of the best midfielders in Europe at the moment. Mm. Definitely. Or in the world. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but uh, I completely agree with you. Uh, I will also say that he has to step up if we are to get a result. I think uh, he is our playmaker. 
uh, normally, <laughs> if you're not considering the last game we played. Yeah, uh, yeah. He is our playmaker. If, if he takes, then uh, then we play better football. Uh, if, if you look at the Poland game, everything went through him. Uh, he was with one with the assist, the goal as well. So if he managed to turn up and, and play one of his great games, uh, then I have no doubt that it will go good for us. It will become good for us. But I don't know. It's You have this feeling that Others need to step up as well. It, that this is uh, something you play for. That you need other players. If they are in the national team, they have to be better than uh, other players that we have available. But well, that's it. You won't, 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 both team are one game away from uh, a World Cup. What more motivation do you need to to, to play yeah. well for the game? You know. Exactly. Exactly. So. I don't know, uh, you have a very tight unit considering what kind of team you have. I think that Martin O'Neill and Boykin have done an amazing job with uh, your side. I mean, it's almost like a, it's almost like you uh, have this understanding on a club level, on a national level, which is amazing that you kind of made that kind of connection with your players and the manager. So that's that's a big kudos for the for Martin O'Neill. Also considering, I think that was it six goals you conceded in the all your quarter tracing round. I think it was like six goals. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's an impeccable record. That 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 also tells us that we're not going to win two nil. Uh, I think that it's going to be a one nil game or perhaps nil nil and then penalties. So it's going to be a mainly tight game, I think. So yeah, like I know what you're saying about uh, the, the team unit. Like even last night on Twitter, I actually sent um, I sent Harry Arthur, David Moyler, who was suspended for the first game, and he will come back in now for the for the game. He was our captain before that. He was just suspended for that game. But uh, Harry Arthur, Jeff Hendrick and uh, David Moyler, I sent them a tweet and then they were all just on Twitter. They were just abusing each other and just giving each other, uh, making fun of each other the whole time. So it was brilliant to see that um, they have such a good connection and they're all such a tight-knit unit. Like, I know people go, oh, Ireland, they haven't got any great players. But, you know, even playing with football before, if you're playing a team that you know they're all going to fight for each other, you know you're gonna have that much um, better players. Does that all saying you know hard work beats talent? If talent hard, if talent doesn't work hard, so you know what I mean. All our players when they step on that pitch and when they put on that green shirt, nine times out of ten, they they put a hundred percent into everything that they do and they all fight for each other. You, you'll see it like if someone goes in for a bad challenge or anything like that. The next time you know someone's gonna come flying in for a challenge with them, and it's a very it's a very old school kind of way, the way our team go on, but us as a fans love it, you know, and... Of course. I think it kind of, it, uh, it adds that element as well, as the fact that when they are all on it as a team, we produce some really good football at times, like we've got some really good results over the last couple of years under Roy Keane and Martin O'Neill, um, the Italy game comes to mind as well, and I was speaking about the Germany and Bosnia games, and then obviously Wales... So there's some fairly big games in there that we weren't expected to win. And we've gone out and done it. And every, a lot of the time when the doubt's been put on us, we've came out and actually given it a go. And now we got beat by Serbia because we went a bit too gung-ho. But I don't. Th I think Martin O'Leary has learned from that. And I think every game he had a game plan to go there and not concede uh, in Copenhagen. Now, I think he'll be conservative for the first hour. And if it's still nil nil, I think he'll he'll push on for a goal, because the away goal will count in uh, extra time as well. So that so it's kind of we can't afford to concede basically unless we're going to score two. Of course, and I I would also like to say that it's a credit to Martin O'Neill and Roy Keane for their setup because if you look at from your point of view, a draw uh, was a fantastic play, a fantastic. Uh, result for you uh, I'm not going to lie of course that you can also put in together that if you won 1-0 one, one something like that would be even better but taking into consideration that you have uh, even your captain was out I think that it was a great obviously a great result and I would have played for that one as well so taking that into consideration I think that Martin O'Neill is a great coach and uh, also with uh, Joaquin as well I think they've done magnificently for Ireland um I can see I can see what you mean about the the, the strong unit part in, in your side because a lot of great teams in, in Europe, uh, France and other team comes to mind is that if you've got the big stars but you need to make sure that they also play football together that they yeah, the don't egos. Have to, 
Exactly. You make the defensive runs and uh, make the tackles and so on, and not just uh, stand down in the middle and hope that other people do, do, do it for them. So, I mean, that is something you can't, uh, I would say, buy. <laughs> it's, it's, of course, something different in international football, but the work effort is yeah. something that is, I would say, essential for international football. Uh, of course, <laughs> You can say too as well that I hope that we also have a kind of work effort, but yours, your team is is one of those who are very hard to beat, and uh, if you lose, it's pretty much one nil uh, or something like that, two one perhaps. It's not like a massive blowout. I don't, I don't want to expect that. I don't think it will be four five or anything like that. I think that one of our teams will win either one nil or two one, or it'll be one one perhaps, and then the away goal. Will yeah, make yeah, the deal. yeah. No, I guess so. You. I think it's something like that. In the... See, a lot, I think a lot, a lot of our fans um, as well are quite disappointed because obviously we, people would say we're arguably without our two best players in um, mm. Seamus Coleman and, and Jonathan Walters who are both actually our captains. So yeah. the two of them are out as well and a lot of people, uh, um, you know, forget, like outsiders forget that we, we, Seamus Coleman is our best player and our, and our team captain. A lot of people forget that he's out like injured um, on other teams and people are like even when we play Wales they're like oh well, we're without Gareth Bale and they go well we've gone nearly without our whole qualifying round without James yeah. Cullen because he's broke his leg exactly, you exactly. And, and you can look at uh, how, how, how important it is if you look at the uh, the start Everton has made in the Premier League I mean <laughs> I'm, an, I'm yeah, an Everton fan yeah. <laughs> yeah I know yeah so you know that it's not like it's like that easy to say that without your best players you don't expect to play the best football but Yet you managed to get great results without him, so that's also a great credit to the manager as well for yeah. that. Yeah, well, I think I think I think De- I think Denmark um, were looking the other night to exploit the fact that uh, Cyrus Christie was playing there. Uh, I think they were looking to to exploit that, and then obviously Shane Duffy just stepped across then because it seemed like uh, Cornelius was stepping out towards um, where Christie was. Exactly, I managed to see that as well, but Shane Duffy was everywhere out that night, so. Amazing player, I would say that. I've I haven't watched, been able to watch him that many times in the Premier League, but the man, that game is spectacular. He was he was everywhere, spectacular player. Yeah, I hope I, he doesn't play tomorrow. What's that? I hope he doesn't play that well tomorrow. <laughs> well, we hope that Ericsson doesn't need it. Uh, yeah, what what would be your, what would be your predictions for the for the game then tomorrow? How do, how do you see it panning out? I, I, ideally, obviously you'd want to win, but how do you, what would be your prediction? I, I, I have to say I think it will be like a, a draw nil nil. I don't think there will be any goals I think we'll go into extra time I even think we'll go into penalties I think it's just in the cards uh, and then we'll see what happens I, I can't for the life of me see that uh, it will be a blowout anyway uh, I, can't either, I can't see either that it will be like a, a, I don't know 2 nil win for you or 2 nil win for us so I think either we a nil, nil, and then penalties, and it'll be a one-one, and then we go through on the away goal. I hope for the latter, but let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking uh, we Ireland are going to win one nil. Well, that's what I'm hoping for, and I think either James, James McLean or, or Shane Duffy to score. Shane Duffy's well overdue a goal. Yeah, sure. He played Magnus with him last night, so oh, two, two nights in a row. So I say, I hope that he doesn't play that well. I hope he doesn't turn up. I hope that the coach drives around him and he can't find it or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope not, but uh, yeah, sure. Um, well, listen. Um, thanks very much for coming on, and best of luck with the uh, with the game. Uh, may the best team win. Obviously, uh, we 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 can friends before and after, but not during the game. Let's see what happens. No, of course, uh, the, the same to you. And um, I would like to say that the Irish fans who came to Copenhagen, you were magnificent. You make the you are a partner on your own. So magnificent to have you here, and everybody who I've spoken to has said that it was. You set the streets alight in a good way. Yeah. Did you Did you see the video with this Victoria's Secret? Yeah. I did. <laughs> uh, it was, Best fans it in the great. world. This is great. Also because uh, right next to it is an Irish pub. A lot of Irish pub here, of course. But like right next to it is an Irish pub. So I think that's why they turned up there. Yeah, yeah. Also, in in their millions. We tweet a picture with the Little Mermaid where she had an Irish flag around her. So. It was fun. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like hanging over her shoulder. Yeah, 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 exactly. Over her neck. So I think that was a fun gesture. Okay. Well, listen, thanks very much for coming on. Uh, guys, uh, don't forget to check out uh, Danish Footy on Twitter. 
Yeah, give Klaus a, a follow there. Oh, you has it. You're nearly about nine thousand, don't you? Sorry. You're nearly about nine thousand followers. Yeah, I do. So the mother Maria. Yeah. I hope you like Danish football because that's all about. <laughs> well, we, we follow them, so if you get a chance, give them a follow. And also, we're aiming for our one thousand subscribers. Uh, we're just uh, above seven hundred and ten. If you guys can just check it out and give us a subscribe, we're aiming for 1,000 subscribers for Christmas. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV.